What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 1996 Land Rover Discovery. Today on the Discovery behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front brakes. We're going to be doing rotors, pads, as well as some new caliper hardware. We will be opting out of the wheel bearing replacement for this DIY, but Stay tuned for a future video on that. In front of us, we have a set of Ate rotors along with some Bosch pads. Um, these pads do include the wear sensor. Not all of these models were equipped with a wear sensor, so if your vehicle does not have them, feel free to snip it off or leave them hanging to the side. Uh, I believe the vehicle behind us does not, but we will find out as we get into this DIY. Typically, brakes can last you anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles. It truly depends on how you drive your vehicle. This is a heavier rig, so the brakes are not going to last as long as they would on a smaller car. And if you do any off-roading or high-speed driving, that's going to affect how your brakes wear as well. A couple of things you can do is a visual inspection. Take a look at the surface of the rotor, see if they're developing any lips on the inboard or outboard. Take a look at the pads. There are gauges that you can use to measure the thickness. Anything less than 2 millimeters, you want to replace them. And in extreme cases, you may have some pulsating when you're doing some heavy braking. So that could be a warped rotor. But just keep in mind that you can't just rule out the rotor. It can also be worn out suspension components. So you may want to do a front end check if brakes haven't solved your issue. But before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this job. For this job, we're going to need a couple of basic tools. Some of these are going to be duplicates and some of them are just going to be nice to haves. Starting from my left, we have a large hammer. This is going to be necessary for separating the hub from the brake disc. We have a large pry bar. We have two torque wrenches, both a 3 8 and a half inch drive, as well as a 3 8 drive ratchet. We have a 16 millimeter wrench. We have a 10 and a 12 millimeter flared wrench. This is gonna be for our brake line stuff and our brake bleeders. Uh, we have an extension for our half inch. We have a set of snap ring pliers, as well as some regular needle nose pliers. Those are just nice to have. Um, the snap ring are gonna be necessary. Uh, we have some pinch off pliers. These are also going to be a nice to have for the soft lines. A uh, small pick or flathead screwdriver will come in handy for this job. A small punch. We also have a piston compressor tool. This does dual pistons as this is a quad piston setup or four pot up front. We have a 26 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter 12 point, and two 19 millimeter sockets, one for a half inch and one for a 3 8 drive. Electric tools make this job a little bit easier. We also have some medium strength thread lock Loctite, uh, some black RTV. Uh, this is gonna substitute the gaskets on the front of the hubs. We have some wheel bearing grease. This is just some Mercedes grease that I have left over from another DIY. Any wheel bearing grease will work though. A paint pen for your hardware. And then a couple chemicals are brake clean and uh, penetrating fluid, as well as a motive bleeder if you're gonna do a one person bleeding job after you're done with this DIY. Or you can grab your best pal and do it the traditional method. And with that, my good people, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, before we get started on this DIY, any brake job that you're doing, it's always important to locate your brake master cylinder reservoir, check the fluid level in it. Doesn't hurt to check the fluid condition in it too. I'll go ahead and pop it open if you can't see the level on the side. Uh, the goal here is that you're aware of how much fluid is in the reservoir. That way, when you're doing the brake job, you're knowing that you're compressing the pistons back in, this level is gonna change a little bit. So if you need to pull some out, use a syringe tool and evacuate some of the fluid. Don't empty out the reservoir, just pull out a little bit if you're concerned about overfilling it, and then you can go and continue on with your brake job. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, today we're gonna to be working on the passenger side of the Rover. However, the steps are gonna be identical for the driver and passenger side. I've been working on the lift, however, this is a super friendly driveway or garage job, uh, but the lift will make it easier for us to film for you. First things first is we have five 26 millimeter lug nuts to remove. Uh, use a breaker bar with the wheel on the ground still if you don't have an impact gun to break these free. If you do have an impact gun, then just follow along. We'll get these off, set the wheel to the side, and go from there. All right, now we have our wheel up, we have a better view of our brake caliper. We're gonna start with removing the pads and then the caliper, so let's get to it. All right, my good people, we're gonna start by removing the pins that hold our brake pads in place. These older pieces of hardware have a cotter pin at the end of the 
uh, the small stud that's holding the pads in place. So we're just going to use our needle nose pliers to kind of straighten those out. We have new ones on the table. However, if you don't have new ones, um, then go ahead and be a little bit gentle with these. You can use any cotter pin as long as it fits in the opening here of the pin. So let's keep that in mind. Then from here, now that those feet are straightened out just a little bit, I'm going to use my small pick. Um, small flathead screwdriver may work as well. I'm just going to pry the cotter pin out. Now we can go ahead and pull these pins out. Sometimes you can just push them out if they're not too crusty in here. Uh, if not, you can use a small punch and hammer and just drive them out. There are springs that go through these pins. If you're gonna be reusing this hardware, make sure you save them. Here's our old spring and our old pin. Again, we have some fresh hardware. There's no reason why you can't reuse these. Hit them with a little bit of a wire wheel and they should be looking good. Now our old brake pads have these small sort of anti-rattle clips that our new ones don't include. I think you could get away if you don't have these without using them, but since we have them, we're gonna hang on to them. We will reuse them uh, with our new pads. And now from here, you can just pull your pads out. If you need to use a small screwdriver or something to pry them out, I still have my pliers in hand. And don't mind this rig specifically, it sees a lot of off-road use, that's its main purpose. So there is a lot of dirt in here, a lot of debris. All right, well, I have the old stuff on the car still. We're gonna use a little bit of brake clean and just kind of clean up our caliper a bit. That way I'm not brake cleaning over our new fresh rotor or pads. And while we have the caliper still fixed to the uh, axle here, we're going to work on compressing our pistons using our tool. And we're just going to work at it evenly. Okay, the tool feels bottomed out there. Pistons are nice and flush inside the caliper. So now we can work on these cars. The next thing, which is a bit annoying, and you may be able to find a workaround back at home, but the hard line coming off of the caliper joins the soft line right up top, which is sitting on a bracket coming off of the axle, held in by a 17 millimeter bolt. There's no way to go directly onto the bolt uh, with a socket. The soft line portion is in your way. Um, if you go to it with a wrench, you have the spring in your way, or you have the brake disc in your way. Um, the best thing I've found, and honestly, with the age of this vehicle, we're gonna flush the fluid anyways, is simply to disconnect the hard line from the soft line. Again, should you be able to work around? Sure, maybe you can bend the tab a bit. Maybe you can push the line over to the side. Use this as an opportunity to flush your brake fluid. Um, learn a little bit more about how to do that using a motor bleeder. We have a link in the description below where we teach you how to flush the brake fluid on your vehicle by yourself with that tool. But uh, regardless, we're gonna take our flared wrench and we're gonna work on freeing up this hard line. So let's do that now. All right, we're going to pinch off the soft line here so we don't lose too much brake fluid. Um, not mandatory, I just I don't want the system to kind of empty out on us, even though we're going to flush it. Uh, this car is equipped with an ABS pump and we don't want to run that dry. This isn't going to be uh, foolproof here, but it's going to help better than nothing. It's not going to be perfect, but it will, hold, it will help. I'm going to take our 16 millimeter wrench to kind of hold the soft line. Cars may or may not be rounded off but traditionally a 16 millimeter wrench is gonna get the flat spot on your soft line and then a 12 millimeter flared wrench is where you're gonna to need to break this fitting free. We have two 19 millimeter bolts holding our brake caliper to our axle here. We're gonna go ahead and remove those now. We're gonna break the bottom one free. switch over to the electric ratchet just to zap it out a little bit quicker. All right, and with that free, we can pull our caliper off and we'll just let it hang out on the side here on our workbench. 
right, now we're gonna work on removing the hardware up front on our hub here so that we can pull this whole assembly out. We have a small cover up front. Sometimes you can just pry them off. If not, use a small flathead screwdriver or something similar to pop off this cap. Just be gentle with it. They get brittle over age. Next, we're gonna encounter a snap ring that we're gonna to wanna to remove. We have two little ears. We have our snap ring pliers. Just pull that off and set it to the side. This is where it gets really messy, especially if you haven't done this before, there's a ton of grease in this area. So get some gloves ready, get some paper towels ready. There'll be no problem. We have a small washer that sits behind the snap ring. Get that one off next. Tension and the grease is kind of keeping it on here. If you can, give yourself a little clean spot where you can set all these pieces in the order that you're taking them out. It'll make your life a little bit easier uh, when you go to assemble everything. Now we have those off, we can work on removing this hub cover. We have five 17 millimeter uh, bolts to remove. You may have missed the socket size at the beginning, but you will need a 17 mil. I have one for my impact. We're just gonna go ahead and zap them off. If you don't have an impact, you're gonna wanna use a breaker bar. Set it something like this, just to counter hold, and then you can use your ratchet and break them free. So keep that in mind. Electric tools are just nice, but they are not mandatory. All right, now that we have those five 17 millimeters off, we can pull this forward. This one's been RTV'd on here, just like the one on the other side. So we're just gonna go ahead and use our screwdriver, see if we can break this seal first. Uh, we're trying not to mar the surface here where this mates up. So just be careful with how you hit this. Once the seal is broken, then it will come off no problem. We can go ahead and set this to the side for now. We're going to clean this up really nicely and we'll use a little bit of just a minor amount of RTV to seal it up just to keep the elements out of here. Now we have that off. We have a nut here that we're gonna to wanna to remove. This has a washer behind it that's folded over, going one towards the brake disc for the secondary nut and one towards this nut here. It's got a small lip. Um, it can be in a different spot depending on how they installed your brakes last. So for us, the flap is over on the left side of our nut. We're gonna bend that flap back. That way we can thread this big locking nut off. For that, we're just gonna use our punch and our hammer and work that little lip off of our nut. And take our small punch and we're just going to work the fold off of our locking nut here. All right, with that off, we should be able to get this locking nut off by hand. These should only really be finger tight, so this should be no problem for you, hopefully. Go ahead and set this to the side. And from there, we're going to work this washer off. This only goes on one way. It does have a uh, flat spot. Ours happens to be up top here. It's a little bit hard to see with the grease. Um, you can clock yours differently, but for ours, it's gonna be up top there. Then we have one more locking nut. This is the one that's setting the load on the wheel bearing for the most part. Again, should come off by hand. So you can note how tight this was um, before you take it apart. For us, we have a little bit of bearing play. There's a good chance that these bearings will need replacement um, not too soon after this job, but that'll be a DIY for another day. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and remove this locking nut. And now with that, we can go ahead and work on getting our hub assembly off. It might be a little bit of a tight fit just from being on here for so long, but in this case, this one came right off. So hopefully yours comes off just as easily. Uh, we have one more washer here that sits right in front of our bearing. We can go ahead and pull that out. And we can pull our bearing out now too. Just set this somewhere clean. You don't want to contaminate it. Um, we're going to clean this up a bit and use some fresh wheel bearing grease. I have a feeling this is a, more of a CV joint grease, which isn't really proper for what we're doing here. Not the end of the world. Um, I know some people will use that instead, but we're going to use some wheel bearing grease. So we'll set that to the side. And now we're going to take this over to the workbench and work on splitting the brake disc from the hub. My good people, we have five 14 millimeter 12 point bolts that hold our brake disc to our hub. 
Uh, if you don't have an impact gun to remove these, I suggest you take the whole assembly and place it on your wheel, which you've already taken off, so that the lug bolts or the studs are in the wheel, and then you can use the whole wheel to kind of act as a vise and hold everything while you break each of these 12 points free with a long breaker bar. Um, we're gonna show you how to do that in the reverse when we go to tighten everything using the wheel as a little cheat. So for now, we're just gonna take our 12 point on an extension and zap them off with the large impact. All right, with those off, now comes the fun part of separating the disc from the hub. And it's as elegant as taking your BFH or your favorite hammer and hanging on to one side while you bash the disc off on the other side. So without further ado, let's get to it, my good people. And then to make our lives a little bit easier on install, we're gonna go ahead and just wire wheel the edge of the hub here so that when it goes into our new disc, it sits in a little bit easier. We grease it up anyway, so not the end of the world. Ideally, these bearings should be replaced at this moment. It's just not something we have handy, but you can certainly visit it later. All right, my good people, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting our hands a little less messy. We're gonna situate our new disc over our hub. It's gonna be loose. Um, and then we're gonna take our bolts and we're gonna get them all started by hand. That way we know the disc is aligned properly with the hub. Then we'll flip it over and sandwich them together. And we'll flip them over once more and torque them down properly. I'm gonna take our disc, line up our bolt holes, that looks pretty good there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just start these by hand. I'm gonna pull them back out and apply Loctite to them, but for now, we just need them to line up and act as a alignment tool. I'm only threading these in halfway. That's all they really need to go. And they're just acting as an alignment tool. You can see there's still a ton of space there. No problem. We'll take our fresh pig mat here. Now we'll take our hammer and we're simply going to tap in between the studs until it's level and then we'll flip it over and snug them up. And we'll flip these bad boys over. And I'm just simply going to pull them back out, apply a little bit of medium strength Loctite to them, snug them up, and I'll pick it back up with you at the wheel where I'm going to show you how to torque them down properly and we'll go from there. All right, we have our wheel on the table. We have our hub and brake disassembly in the back of the wheel here. The studs are keeping this from spinning on us. We're gonna to torque down all five of these 12.14 millimeter bolts down to 73 Newton meters. And we're gonna tighten them down in a crisscross pattern as if we were tightening down lug bolts. All right, now with that, let's head back over to the vehicle and put our hub assembly back on our carrier. We're gonna go ahead and fit our hub assembly back on. I went ahead and added a little bit of clean, fresh wheel bearing grease inside of here. Feed that baby on. Now from there, we're gonna clean up our outer bearing just a little bit, feed some fresh grease into that, and then we'll feed that in now. We'll take our washer, it's gonna back the back of the bearing. And only goes on one way. Now we're gonna take our first locking nut and get this one started. Again, these were really only finger tight. What we're looking for is snugging it up nicely to where it was about before. And we don't really want any play in the uh, hub here. We don't want it to be so tight where it's not able to spin freely but we don't want it to be loose enough where the disc can move around and cause the pulsation when you're braking. All 
With our interlocking nut nice and snug, we're gonna take our washer once more. And depending on where the locking nut ended, we may be able to keep the one fold on it already. If not, it's not a big deal to fold back the washer, but that locking fold is pretty much perfect. So we probably have the locking nut right at the same spot that it used to be. We'll go ahead and give it a couple more taps just to situate it a little bit more properly. And then with that, we can take our outer locking nut once more and get that one started as well. Again, finger tight is the goal here for the most part and making sure we have no play on our bearing. All right, that's gonna be nice and snug there. And now I'm just gonna work on folding over on the opposite side of the first fold, uh, the washer bit to come over the top of this nut, just to keep it from spinning loose. Uh, I'm gonna use the little punch and the hammer and just kind of use that to bend a lip over. All right, now we have that locked in. We can work on getting the rest of the hub cover on now if we'd like. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and just clean up the surface. Traditionally, there is a gasket for here. Um, we don't have one available to us right now. So we're just gonna use some brake clean, clean up the inside of this hub a little bit or the sub cover, and we'll apply the tiniest amount of black RTV to it and situate it back over. Then we're gonna add a little bit of wheel bearing grease into the cap here just to kind of encapsulate everything behind it. And we can go ahead and place it over, lining up the bolt holes for our flange here. We might have to line up the spline first and then we can rotate it as need be. Freaking beautiful, my good people. We're gonna take one of the bolts that hold this hub on or this hub cover on. We're just gonna put it in at an angle and just use it to pull the axle stub through, just like that. Now we can take our washers, place those back over, and then we'll pull it through one more time. And now we can get our snap ring back on. And then at the end, we will install the five 17 millimeter bolts once more. Now with that on, the last thing we have left is our little cap. Feel free to put a small dab of grease in there. And seat that baby back on. Wonderful. Now we're going to take our five 17 millimeter bolts and we're going to apply a little bit of Loctite to them. Again, we're just using medium strength here. And then we're going to go ahead and get them all snug up and then we'll torque them down properly. I'm just gonna use the impact to snug these 17 millimeter bolts up, and then we're gonna to torque them down to 65 newton meters in a crisscross pattern, just as if we were tightening down our wheel. Now we'll set our torque wrench to 65 newton meters, and then we're gonna use our pry bar to counter hold so that we can torque this down without having everything spin on us. Wonderful. With that, I'm gonna take a paint pen and just mark them down a little bit so that I know that they're torqued and they shouldn't be moving on us. All right, my good people, now that we have that situated, the next thing is gonna to be to remount our caliper. So let's do that now. We have our two 19 millimeter mounting bolts ready to rock and roll. Okay to reuse these, just clean up the threads if there's a little bit of debris on them. We're just gonna get these situated by hand first. You can kind of feed them into the hole where they belong, and then you can worry about threading them in after. I'll grab my 19, I'm just gonna give them a couple twists by hand. I'm gonna switch over to the electric ratchet and just snug them up first, and then we'll torque them down to 82 Newton meters. with both of those snugged up. Now we're gonna go ahead and reattach our hard line to our soft line. Okay. 
make sure that these fittings always go in nice and easy. If you can get them in by hand first, then that means it's perfect. They're not going to cross thread. Because once these brake fittings cross thread, they will never seal again. And you will have a terrible time replacing these things. So take your time with them. Don't rush this part. Get it nice and snug. Doesn't take a lot of torque. Once they seat, you can give them maybe an eighth of a turn. If that, and they'll be good to go. All right, that should be nice and snug for us to work with to re-bleed our brakes. At this point, my good people, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our brake pads, but it's gonna be up to you if you choose to use a motive bleeder and do a one person bleeding job, or if you do it the old school way with a friend. Um, if you wanna see how to use a motive bleeder a little bit more in depth, be sure to click the link in the description below where we take you through the whole ins and outs of using that tool. Super awesome, one of my favorites. But for now, we're gonna pick it back up with the pads and get one step closer to wrapping up this DIY. All right, we're gonna go ahead and feed in our brake pads. Oh, that's beautiful. Fresh pads are the best. We're going to reuse these little um, anti-rattle clips that came equipped on our old pads. It doesn't hurt to double up here. These are not included with the new caliper hardware, just FYI. So they may be an old design or a superseded design, but we have them. We'll use them. And then we're just simply going to feed the pin through while we get the spring started in between the caliper. And that's going to help kind of keep everything nice and tight. Make sure that that anti-rattle clip, if you're reusing it, sits below the pin. Otherwise, it's useless. And with the pin through, we can feed our little cotter pin in at the end. Or if you're reusing your hardware, uh, your reused cotter pin will go in there too. Right, and if you pinched off your line like we did, make sure you pull that off. At this point, brakes have been bled. Either use the motive method or you did the uh, two-person method. Now we can go ahead and wrap this up by throwing our wheel back on. So let's do that now. Now with the vehicle back on the ground, we're gonna torque our lug nuts down to uh, 100 foot-pounds. I'm just gonna go ahead and do them in a star pattern, just like we did everything else. All right, my good people. And with that, this DIY is finally over. I mean, that's gonna wrap up this DIY for today. Uh, a little bit more involved than your standard brake job. You have bearings, you have hubs to deal with, but overall, definitely a doable job. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave those in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.